AMD has been going strong with their high-end CPUs for years now, but how well do the last two generations actually keep up with AMD's latest 7950X CPU? In this video, I'm comparing three generations of Ryzen 9 processors, namely 7950X versus 5950X versus 3950X. We could also be talking of a comparison between Zen 4, Zen 3 and Zen 2. Is it worth upgrading? Starting with the price. The new 7950X in January 2023 can be had for about 590 to 620 US dollars. The predecessor 5950X goes for like 500 to 520 dollars. Whereas for the 3950X, I'm not going to list any retail prices since due to the product's age, those are no longer realistic. Cores and threats. Over the last three generations, AMD hasn't changed their core and thread count. The three CPUs therefore sport 16 cores and 32 threads respectively. Specifications. The 3950X and 5950X still are home to the AM4 socket, whereas the recent model of course goes into the AM5 socket and needs to be paired with DDR5 RAM. In the case of the 7950X, not only base and boost clocks have been increased, but so has the TDP. That's 105 to 170 watts. Furthermore, the new model now comes equipped with integrated Radeon graphics, something that wasn't a thing with its predecessors. Test setup. For the Zen 4 CPU, I'm going with the ASRock X670E Taichi Carrara. For Zen 3 and 2, I'm picking the ASRock X570 PG Velocita motherboard. As for the graphics card, it's the ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC. For the AM5 system, I'm going with Kingston Fury Beast RGB 32GB DDR5 6000MHz CL36 RAM. The AM4 systems, on the other hand, are equipped with G-Skill Flare X DDR4 3200MHz CL14 memory with 16GB. Don't worry, I've made sure the capacity does not have any impact on the test results. Clock speeds. Things have changed a lot here. While the clock speed at full load got slightly lower from the 3950X to the 5950X, with Zen 4, AMD has gone all out in terms of frequency. We're talking 5 GHz and higher. Under single core loads, we see a similar picture. Although the boost clocks did noticeably increase from one generation to another, especially as far as the 7950X is concerned. Performance, productivity. In this Cinebench R23 test, our eyes are about to witness a very noticeable jump. While Zen 3 performs only 7.5% faster than Zen 2 in the multi-core test, Zen 4 on the other hand is taking it to a whole new level. That's a lead of nearly 47% over its predecessor, Zen 3. Noteworthy gains can consistently be seen in this single core test as well. Coming from Zen 2 to 3, we see a 19% improvement, and from Zen 3 to 4, 24%. In the 7 zip benchmark, AMD Ryzen CPUs have been doing well in recent years. From Zen 2 to 3, there's an uplift of 10% measurable. The gain from 5950X to the 7950X even is almost 45%. We see similar results in the V-Ray 5 rendering test. A gain of 13% from Zen 2 to 3, as well as an incredible 48% between Zen 3 and 4. In the Corona benchmark, the Zen 3 CPU is rendering about 16% faster than its Zen 2 counterpart. Zen 4, on the other hand, completes the task almost 26% quicker than Zen 3. In the Blender test, we see a mere 6% gain between Zen 2 to 3. A much more optimistic uplift can be seen coming from Zen 3 to 4, that's a 47% gain. As far as video encoding in Handbrake is concerned, Zen 3 is 10% faster than Zen 2 here. Zen 4 with the 7950X is speeding up though and manages a lead of 32% over Zen 3. Moving on to the Vegas Pro 20 video rendering test, where we see a similar scenario. Here a 5950X is 7% faster than the 3950X, 
the 7950X is doing 33% better than the 5950X, though. Gaming. In the 3D Mark Time Spy test, Zen 3 and 2 are pretty much on par. Zen 4, on the other hand, is taking the upper hand more or less, a 24% higher score. Assassin's Creed Valhalla makes the 5950X and 3950X CPUs practically perform equally as well. Maybe Zen 3 is offering these slightly better 1% lows here, but hardly worth the mention. Zen 4, or rather the 7950X, is doing nearly 50% better than both its predecessors, also offering 37% higher minimum FPS. In the next game title, Borderlands 3, there seems to be some clear gaps. The 3950X, when combined with an RTX 3090, is a recipe for an obvious CPU bottleneck. Zen 3 on average delivers 33% more FPS than Zen 2 does. A not so huge 16% uplift can be seen coming from Zen 3 to 4, maybe a GPU bottleneck. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, a 3950X is only outputting a measly 80 FPS here, the 5950X is doing 100. That's a gain of 25%. Nearly such a big one is witnessable from Zen 3 to 4, 22%. Much more impressive here is the uplift of 1% lows, a nice 52%. Pretty good actually. In the title Far Cry 6, between Zen 2 and 3, there's a 21% gain, while Zen 2 appears to be dangerously close to yet another CPU bottleneck here. Coming from a 5950X, a 7950X, also delivers us a 21% performance uplift. That's paired with 42% higher 1% lows. In the racing game Forza Horizon 5, all three generations are offering great frame rates. Still, a 5950X is about 11% faster than a 3950X. Things only get better with the 7950X, sporting a 18% gain over the 5950X. As far as 1% lows are concerned, 34% faster. GTA 5 we could almost leave out by now, but we do get to see some interesting behavior here. Zen 2 is clearly buried in its CPU bottleneck. For the most part, the bottleneck is removed with Zen 3. That's an uplift of 24%. Nonetheless, Zen 4 is taking it one step further and manages to be close to 7% better than Zen 3. Things appear fairly balanced in Horizon Zero Dawn. The three CPUs do quite well here. Still, Zen 3 is overtaking its predecessor by 12%. Zen 4 is taking it up a notch and distances itself from its direct predecessor, Zen 3, by 21%, does additionally shine with a 51% gain in the 1% lows department. In the game Metro Exodus, Zen 3 is 9% better than Zen 2. Zen 4, in turn, is 10% better than Zen 3. So we see smaller performance gains here, but 24% higher minimum values. At first glance, Red Dead Redemption 2 seems to lead to similar differences. The 5950X compared to the 3950X is allowing for 16% more FPS on screen. The 7950X then only manages an uplift of a little over 8% over the 5950X. The gains look much more promising in terms of 1% lows, namely 30%. In the title Rise of the Tomb Raider, the 3950X, based on Zen 2, is obviously running into a CPU bottleneck. Its successor, 5950X, is already capable of 29% more frames per second. A 7950X isn't that much faster though, with a 12% FPS lead on average. Instead, the 1% lows is where the party is at, a respectable uplift of 33%. I couldn't measure that much of a difference in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 20% more FPS from Zen 2 to Zen 3, and roughly 8% from Zen 3 to Zen 4. The FPS gain when it comes to 1% lows, on the other hand, is at about 31%. Gaming average FPS. The average of a total of 11 games tested paints a nice and clear picture. It becomes obvious that a 3950X based on Zen 2 is fairly close to being a CPU bottleneck, at least when paired with powerful graphics cards such as an RTX 3090. 
the 5950X therefore is offering a 17% higher frame rate than the 3950X. We are looking at an improvement in 1% lows of 15%. The jump from the 5950X to the 7950X is at 16% and 33% for the 1% lows. If we, on the other hand, compare a 3950X with the 7950X, Zen 4 is easily offering 36% higher FPS. And we should also factor in the 54% uplift in 1% lows. Power consumption and temperatures. Now this is where Zen 4 in the case of the 7950X appears to show not so desirable results. In order to maintain that enormous high performance level, AMD obviously doesn't seem to prioritize power consumption and temperatures. Although if we were to manually do some optimization work, we could significantly lower both the power draw and temperatures without any noteworthy performance losses. With the transition from Zen 2 to Zen 3, we actually witness a drop in power draw. A 5950X at full load consumes roughly 10% less power than the 3950X. A 7950X already draws 74% more than its predecessor. What I find to be even sadder is the increase of idle power draw, something that hardly even can be lowered with optimizations. While with the two past generations, we were drawing only 65 to 70 watts at idle, with a 7950X we are looking at over 120 watts. That's an increase of a whopping 89%. The temperatures at first glance may appear horrendous, but AMD apparently is going for a very aggressive 95 degrees Celsius temperature target. If you were to go for manual optimizations, you could make the CPU run much cooler. Conclusion Without a doubt, Zen 4 is offering a notable performance uplift while still maintaining the very same core and threat count. The biggest win here I see in terms of raw performance. So if you're focused on productivity workloads, you could very well consider an upgrade from the 3950X and maybe even 5950X. As far as gaming is concerned, I'm not so sure. At the end of the day, it comes down to what kind of graphics card you install into your system. A 3950X quickly ends up being a CPU bottleneck for modern high-end GPUs. You're holding up fairly well with the 5950X though, but sure, the 7950X will help you squeeze out even more. Zen 4, or rather the 7950X, therefore not only offers absolutely higher frame rates, but also a overall smoother gaming experience thanks to those noticeably higher and more stable 1% lows compared to its predecessors. The drawbacks might be the higher temperatures and the clearly higher power draw. By optimizing or simply going with a non-X version of those Ryzen 7000 CPUs, those mentioned drawbacks quickly vanish. Now whether or not you should upgrade at the end of the day is a decision you'll have to make on your own. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.